I like your nail polish color. Thanks. It's bright pink. I painted them myself. Oh, they look really good. I just chipped off all my nail polish. Mm. Mm. As one does. Oh, that's our sister Lizzie texting me about how good the Wicked movie looks. And mm. I to, now I have to mute her. Do you want to tell me what you're reading? Yes, I do. Okay, what are you reading? Okay, so I am reading this book I started reading last year. It's a very, it's a big book. It's nonfiction. Oh. Oh. And I picked it up again this week and I've really been enjoying it. Okay. I am reading The Warmth of Other Suns, The Epic Story of America's Great Migration mm. by Isabel yeah. Wilkerson. Yes. And I have very much enjoyed it so far. Yeah. Um, I'm almost, I think I'm about halfway through. Yeah. Um, but like You're I said. Probably more like, than it. halfway through with the index. Oh, yes. Remember yes. that. I forgot about that. Um, but so this story is about um, African-Americans fleeing the South or migrating away from the South into more of the Northern cities. Um, and so it follows three different individuals as they leave like their respective hometowns and move up north. Is this um, after the Civil War? After the Civil War. Ma- most of them, two of them leave in, I believe, like the 30s and then one leaves in like the 50s area. Okay. So that's right like before, they're like, fleeing like Jim Crow. Yes, Jim Crow. Okay. Um so right before like the civil rights movements. Mm-hmm. Um, but she follows these three individuals. One of them moved to Chicago. Yes. Um, and there are actually some there are book tours you can do in Chicago. And one of the book tours like uses this book as things that you can go see in Chicago. Oh, cool. So I think that would be like a really cool thing to try yeah. one time. This author is really, really good at writing. I don't know how to say it. But it's very, like you would think this book, this big would be very like dense, but it's yeah. really easy to follow the stories and weaves together a lot of the history really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've really been enjoying it. I think especially because of the Chicago tie-in too. Yeah. And then one of them follows, he moved to New York. So mm-hmm. that's also kind of a fun. And that the guy that lived in New York, he would work on the train that ran from New York into, I think it ran like down the coast to Alabama, Mississippi. So he like talks about how like working on the train and like going back and forth. Where Um, where does the third person go? Oh, he goes to California. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I think he's in LA. Okay. San Diego, LA. Um, so it gets all three corners not three corners, whatever, um, different areas of the country are followed. The man that goes to California, he's a doctor. So he discusses how he's like building his practice in, in California. Oh, wow. And in Chicago, Ida is her name, is how she has like three young kids and how she's like adjusting to living from, she was from Mississippi and then going to Chicago, which was mainly like living in the city. So adjusting to that. Did she Um, move her three kids from Mississippi or did she have her three kids in Chicago? She moved two of her kids to Chicago. She was pregnant with her third. Mm -hmm. And then she actually went back to Mississippi to have her baby and then moved with the baby back to Chicago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a really cool story. I really like the way she's writing it. And she interviewed these three individuals. So you get her, their like firsthand account of it. And she also does at like the beginning of the chapter, she'll have like little bits from other authors, which I really have enjoyed the epigraphs. Little those epigraphs. There was one from, oh, James Baldwin. Did you? My guy. You didn't read Notes of a Native Son or have you? No, I read Go Tell It on the Mountain. So that's what I'm reading. That's great. 
So what are you reading, my sis? I just started yesterday and finished this morning the latest from Allie Hazelwood, Bride. Oh, very nice. Now let me show you the cover in color because I like that. That's important. I like to show. Okay. So it's actually not that different, but it has some red in it. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I say that's how I pictured it. You know what? I've probably seen a photo of it before. You that's definitely why. have. Um, also because it was part of our newsday post. You're right. You're right. Um, but Allie Hazelwood, we love. She's such a good romance writer. Mm-hmm. I have not read a single thing by her that I have not enjoyed. This is her first um fantasy romance. Um. And I almost would say it's like, it's paranormal romance more so than fantasy. Um, It's basically um, an arranged marriage, like a marriage of convenience between a vampire named Misery and a werewolf named Lo. Um, But it's like set in our current world. And it's almost as if like, the way she writes it is like, yeah, there's humans and there's werewolves and there's vampires. And like, mm. we all know that, right? And also there's like the Guggenheim. Like she just like references like our world, yeah. um, but as if there are also werewolves and vampires. And I would argue that werewolves and vampires are the most well-known paranormal creatures um, mm-hmm. to like the general public. Um, but other than that, it's just like another one of her like terrific romances where the guy falls first and like the girl has no idea but it's still like it's just a delight to read if you don't like fantasy or like paranormal Mm -hmm. it's probably not the book for you because there are some things in it that like you just kind of have to like go with it because it's like she's a vampire he's a werewolf Mm -hmm. um so but if you like it up do with it suck it up that's like they're like a different species okay like they have they do stuff um but if you liked um the like blood and ash series like from a vampire perspective then Mm. like you won't have an issue with like some of the stuff in here and then there's some other stuff from a wolf perspective (laughs) that like I was like oh I didn't know there's like a whole like culture and fandom around where wolves that I was not aware of I found bride to be like if you like ally hazelwood it's another one of her just like knock them out of the park great love story um i would just say like proceed with caution if you don't care for fantasy or paranormal Mm. you might not like it just because that's the genre that it's in but if you like that genre you will like this book it was like one of those things where i'm just like okay great Another standard to set that a, that a man won't be, certainly won't be able to hit because he's not a werewolf. He's not an alpha werewolf. But um, you could potentially become a vampire. I, I mean, I have the canines. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I have the widow's peak. Mm-hmm. I really liked it. It's, it's a quick read. Um, and it just like makes me want to read more from Allie Hazelwood. Mm. Fortunately, she has another contemporary romance coming out I think in June um okay so I finished that this morning and now I have like a little bit of a book hangover which always bums me out Mm -hmm. um but the other book that I just started is Forgottenness um by Tanya Meljartshuk um she's a Ukrainian writer um and this book actually came out in 2016 but it just got translated into English this year so it's like new to the English speaking um, audience. Um, and she is apparently a very prolific writer in Ukraine. Um, so I'm really excited to read this story. I just put water out. I just put Oops. water out of my mouth. Um, oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, all right then. Here we are. At, at our favorite at, time at the end of another it's in it's the end of the time of our reading maybe a song perhaps Definitely that was not. a good start 